Hey y'all, this is William from Permapastures Farm and today is part two of how I carve spoons. If you haven't already uh, seen the first part, go ahead back and check that out. I think it's gonna be right over here. Go ahead and uh, check that out and you'll be caught up to this point basically. All right, so uh, it's been a couple days since I roughed this out and it's uh, fully dried. The way you can tell that is if you hold it up to your lip and it changes temperature in just a few seconds, changes the same temperature as your lip in just a few seconds, then you know it's fully dried. If it stays cold longer than two or three seconds, then you know it's not, it's not fully dried. There's still quite a bit of water in there and it has, it's, it's not fully dried. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is the finishing cuts and basically we're going to clean up like this bowl area, um, and also give it a, uh, like a finished look. Um, the difference between these finishing cuts and those other cuts is that now the spoon is dry. So whenever I, uh, bring my knife across the wood or slice into the wood, it's going to leave a different texture on this finish um also it's it's sometimes it slightly warps a little bit um after it dries the grain kind of moves around a little bit stuff like that so we're going to correct any imperfections yeah this actually looks pretty good it doesn't look like it's changed much but the first thing i'm going to do is put that rag over there the first thing i'm going to do is clean up the inside of this bowl and whenever you're doing finishing cuts on this uh, dried wood, you wanna make sure your tools are very, very sharp. Either have a second set of tools just for finishing cuts or go ahead and get everything polished up and uh, sharp um, before you do these cuts. That's what I did. I went ahead and honed my spoon knife and my, uh, and my slowed knives and stuff like that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is hollow out this bowl, not hollow out the bowl, but go ahead and clean up the inside of this bowl all right i think this camera angle will work best but what i'm basically gonna do is get rid of any of these hairy bits in here any of these uh it almost looks like it was um skipping across the wood right here so i'm gonna just take try to take the thinnest layer possible from edge to edge let's go ahead and see how this goes there you go now you can see that one cut and you can see how it's different than the rest so I'm going to go ahead and do that with the in entire inside of the bowl. I don't need to reshape anything. All I'm doing is clearing away any of that oxidized wood, smoothing it out, and getting rid of those skip marks. All right. There we go. It's all smoothed out in there. The next thing I'm gonna do is work my way around this rim and make sure that is the way I want it. And now where the crank meets, where this part, this downhill slope meets this downhill slope, there's this um, little hairy bit right here and it's really easy to overcut and uh, cut into your bowl too much, um, especially when it's green. But when it's dried, it uh, is a lot easier to achieve. When it's green, those fibers just wanna kinda stick together and they're a real pain. This knife actually came from Ben and Denise at Renewed Homestead. They gave me a little uh, gift bag full of knives and a tool roll. So shout out to Ben and Denise from Renewed Homestead. Go ahead and give them a, a follow, guys. Now this part right here is the dangerous part. You see this little flap right here? If I'm not careful, I can keep I can keep chasing that so to the point where I don't have a spoon anymore. So all I'm trying to do is just cut deep enough to release those fibers. And here I'm just doing very, very light, delicate push cuts with my thumb. Come around the other side. There we go. And now that that is in place, now that the edge of this, oh, almost. All 
All right, now that the edge of this, uh, the top side of this rim is, is where I want it, now I'm gonna clean up the outside of this bowl. There we go. Now the outside of that bowl is about where I want it. Now I'm going to finish up the back side of the bowl, this part right here. And this is where that heartwood came through. I don't know if you guys remember seeing that or not. Oh, I should also mention that Ben and Denise just gave me a bunch of peach and apple wood from some pretty old apple trees and peach trees that are gonna have to come down. But should be some pretty cool spoons that come out of those here in the future. Now on this back side, you want to be careful you're not taking up, taking too much material because you can, and I have before in the past, definitely carved a hole through the bottom of my bowl. And I'm just taking enough to take that oxidized layer off and smooth out any bumpy parts, any uneven parts that I'm seeing. All right, now I'm gonna work my way down and start working on this handle. Clean up these established facets. And I wanna remove as little material as possible. Clean up these edges. Now this back side. Now this back ridge right here is a little sharp. I'm gonna go ahead and just bring that down just a hair. I'm just kind of running my hand through. Now on these edges right here, that's a sharp, almost 90 degree angle. I'm gonna bring that angle down so it, it's, it's comfortable in your hand. I'm just going to take the corners off. Look at that. A nice long spiral. And that just makes it so where there isn't an uncomfortable sharp edge in your hand when you're using this spoon. All right, there we go. So now the next step is to put in my maker's mark. Usually put it here on the back. And I'm going to grab my, this is a technique from the Salmi people up in uh, Scandinavia or wherever they're from, I'm not sure, but it's called coal rosing. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the fibers with this, uh, this is called a chip carving knife right here. I'm going to separate the fibers, apply some sort of pigment, uh, in this case it'll be coffee and, uh, yeah, just coffee, rub it in where I separated the fibers and then burnish over it so it seals the fibers over that, keeps the pigment in there, and um, it'll stay for the life of the spoon. So I got to go ahead and put this on my lap. I'm going to go ahead and get my maker's mark in there. Now I'm going to take this. This is just an old glass yogurt jar um, with coffee grounds, really fine espresso ground coffee and um, some mineral oil. I'm gonna just take a little dab of this and I'm gonna rub it into the back. There, got a little too much. Just rub it in the back, rub it into those fibers. Wipe it off. Wipe 
And then I'm gonna take this polished rock right here, um, highly polished rock, and I'm gonna burnish this in. I don't know if that's coming through very well, but there's my maker's mark. So if you see that on my spoon, you know it made. I made it. All right, and now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is burnish the entire spoon. So I'm gonna take this highly polished object. Uh, you can use steel. Um, I used to use the back of my knife. Um, you can use, uh, I think, Ashley and James, which are the some friends we have. They live up in uh, Virginia. They, she uses, uh, I think, either deer or elk antler. I can't remember which one, but I'm going to go ahead and um, use this, burnish the entire spoon, and then we'll go on to the next step. All right, so there is that. It's fully burnished now. My maker's mark is in there. Um, the next step is to lightly oil it with this, with a rag. Um, this rag right here is just an old, old t-shirt but it um it's charged with walnut oil so i'm just going to lightly oil this spoon so the next step is to put it in the oven at 380 degrees for about 30 to 45 minutes um i'll put it in there for 30 minutes and then i'll uh, pull it out check it to make sure the color is where i want it and if it needs to go in longer then i'll throw it back in there um, with these lighter spoons it helps bring out the contrast in the grain like there's some contra you can kind of see this grain going through right here and in the bowl um but it just helps make the the colors pop uh caramelize the the sugars in the wood really and then we'll uh immediately from the oven we'll pull it out throw some more oil on it and that'll help soak in the oil and then we'll let it uh cure and then we'll ship it off. This spoon is actually for Kevin Frazier. He saw the video, um, the spoon video that I put out and immediately wanted the spoon. So this, this spoon is going to Kevin Frazier. Um, if you guys haven't already seen that interview, go back and check out that interview. It'll be right up here. Um, go ahead and back and go ahead and go back and check out that interview. Uh, it's fantastic people. So, We'll go ahead and throw this in the oven and then I'll pull it back out and show you guys what it looks like afterwards. All right, so the spoon is out of the oven and it is still hot. Here's what it looks like. You can sell the, you can see the, the difference in color here. And then it's also it's also hardened it quite a bit as well, which will which will definitely help. I'm gonna apply just a little bit of this walnut oil, and I'm just gonna rub it in. All right, there we go. Now we're just gonna let that cure. Uh, it takes well for it to heat up, for it to to dry. It only takes a few days. But for it to cure, it's going to take about two weeks to cure. Um, now, if you don't have nut allergies, it's okay to go ahead and start using it. But if you do have nut allergies, you definitely want it to cure first before you start using it. Well, just use a different oil, actually. Um, you can use boiled linseed oil if you wanted to. I just don't like the discoloration that the boiled linseed oil brings. The walnut oil doesn't, doesn't change the color of the wood at any it just enhances its already natural features. Um, but this is the finished spoon. This is what it looks like. And it fits comfortably in your hand. All these spoons and utensils, they're not show pieces. They're not decorative show pieces. They are intended to use. A lot of the design and stuff isn't necessarily made for looks. I mean, it looks, it looks good. It's just the, the intent is for use. Like you can make some crazy looking spoons that look really cool, but they don't have much uh, functional use and stuff. I wanna make functional, useful spoons. So this is what this one looks like. You can see the, the change in the grain, especially right here. You can see that it's gotten a little bit better. My maker's mark has disappeared just a little bit. It's just a little harder to see, which is fine. That's not really the the point of the the maker's mark, not for it to be some big, 
you know, thing that you focus on. It's just so you know that I am the one that made that. <laughs> so uh, I'll show you some other ones that I've carved recently. So these are some of the other objects that I've carved recently. Some of these are on the website. Some of them aren't. Um, some of them work. Some of them have failed. Like there's this one. This is a flat spoon with no crank on it. As you can see there, this is just a, uh, and then it has the little finial right here. Um, this is more of like a, a scoop if you're scooping coffee or something like that. This isn't big enough for my mom to use for scooping coffee. You should see one of these days, I'm going to show you how much coffee she puts in the coffee pot every morning here. This one is neat. I like this. Here's my maker's mark on this one too, but this is a little pocket spoon. And the history on pocket spoons is a little interesting. I guess back in uh, like the, I don't really know what time period, but the Welsh people, there was a shortage on spoons. I don't know if the spoon carver was out of business or what, but if you had people over for dinner, they were expected to bring their own spoons. And if you're bringing your own spoon, you want it to be able to fit in your pocket. So that's where this little, this little pocket spoon came from. But it just fits in your pocket and you can eat on the go whenever you're ready. Um, this is on the website so is that flat spoon uh here's another eating spoon that i've carved this is interesting with the grain i like the grain pattern on this one and then this little part right here i think is pretty cool too it's kind of cool when you have those discolored parts of the wood that just pop up while you're carving um here's another eating spoon this is a small little almost a scoop of some kind um it's a spoon as well, but it's just smaller. It's just a smaller version, different shape on the bowl, more of a squared off shape. Um, this was an experiment. As you can see, there's a bend in it. That was intentional, believe it or not. I was trying to follow the natural curve of the grain of the wood. Um, I like the fact that it follows the natural curve, but I don't like the shape of the bowl. It came out a little wonky. This is not for sale. Um, this also has a little stop, like a little rest. So if you have it on the side of your bowl or your pot, it doesn't just slip into the soup or anything like that. You can just kind of rest it on there and it stays. Um, this, I really like this one. This one is on the website. This is a, uh, a like a serving spoon of some sort. Um, and it also has that Colrose pattern on there. That took some time to do. This is the one of the first successful coal rosing projects I've, I've tried. Um, but I really like this one. This one's cool. Um, here's another eating spoon, an example of coal rosing as well. Instead of using coffee on this one, I used, I believe, I can't remember what powder or spice I used on this. But there's another example of coal rosing. I don't know if I'll do that pattern again, but it was good practice. This one is a pretty cool spoon. I like this one. Um, here's another serving, serving dish of some sort or a serving, uh, spoon. This one has a flatter top right here. Uh, it's not rounded off or anything like that. So there's that one. Here's another example of a uh, corrosing. It's a round spoon. It's a smaller one. Um, kind of fits in your hand like this. And then also on the back, I tried to do a little, uh, I don't know if it's showing well on camera, but there's a little plant right here on the back, a little flower, a little interesting, interesting design. All right, so that's it for this spoon. I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry. Once it's fully dried, then I'll send it off to Kevin Frazier. And if anybody is wanting um, bone sauce, spoons, comfrey, or anything like that, go to our website. It'll be down below in the description. Uh, if you guys are wanting a specially carved object of whatever kind, contact me through either permapasturesfarm at gmail.com or through Instagram and we can get that worked out. And until next time, thanks for watching.